Hi, welcome to our video lecture about feedback control with Python. Today we're going to be talking about transfer functions using Collimator and we have officially started module 2 which is going to be focused on automation and more specifically uh, feedback control using PID loops. In our previous module, module 1, that was focused on dynamic simulation, we developed a model for a gravity drained tank and so that model, just as a little refresher, showed flow coming in, this was Q in, and then it had flow going out, which was Q out. And then we calculated the uh, liquid level and the volume in the tank using a simple differential equation. So in reality, um, it's pretty difficult to specifically set a flow rate. And in reality, what you would have is instead of being able to set the flow rate directly, Rather, you need to set a valve position. So you have some kind of valve that you're turning. You set the position of that valve, and then the flow rate is proportional in some way to the position of that valve. So today we're going to focus on adding a, a transfer function to model the dynamics of the valve. So if you change the valve position, you wouldn't expect the flow rate to change instantaneously from one level to another. Rather, you would expect that if it's like an automatic control valve, you might set the position, um, change it from 20% open to 40% open, for example, and then it's going to take the valve itself some time to open, and it's going to take the flow itself some time to change from one flow to another. So we are going to be uh, developing a model here for this valve and our input to this model is going to be L or which is would be our lift or our valve position. All right, and so we're going to use a transfer function model. So specifically a transfer function model uh, is a pretty simple model that if where if we if this is time if we made a step change in the lift or the valve position we can make that step change pretty much instantaneously if it's like a digitally controlled valve for example we can change the command signal on the valve going from 20 percent to 40 percent but then we would expect one way that we can model the valve or approximate its behavior is if here is our Q or our flow on that same time scale we might expect to see our flow do something like this it would go from a steady state then once the valve position is open we'd expect the flow to be gradually increasing and then ultimately level off at some rate so a transfer function model it helps us to approximate this kind of behavior using a couple of parameters so the first parameter is called the gain the process gain and we're going to be using just what's called a first order transfer function or the simplest kind of transfer function so this gain k is equal to the change in output over the change in input and in our specific case it's going to be the change in flow rate over the change in in lift or in valve position so here is this is the change in our flow rate and this is the change in our valve position so the gain just tells us this is delta Q. Okay, the gain tells us how much we would expect for Q to change um, proportionally to a change in our valve position. The other parameter is going to be called uh, the time constant, or tau. And tau tells us how fast this is going to change. And typically, tau is approximately a sixty-three point two percent. Uh, it, it's the time that it takes, sorry, tau is the time that it takes for the uh, output to change 63.2% of the way to its new position. So let's say that's about here, that 63% mark. So tau, and there's more theory that goes into this, which I'm skipping over, but tau tells us something about how fast the process changes. So 
a tau, like a, a really small tau, means that we have a fast process and we'd see it change faster. Whereas a large tau tells us that we have a slow process and it would change even slower than this. All right, so tau is our process time constant. All right, so we are going to switch over to Collimator now. Collimator is the dynamic simulation software that's very compatible with Python that we're using. So I'm going to go into Collimator. I just, I just do this through my web browser, and Google Chrome is my browser of choice. So I'm going to show you Collimator. Again, if you haven't been following the lectures, um, Collimator is our oh. all right. So we go to uh, to pull up Collimator. We go to Collimator.ai, and you can go to try for free, create an account, or just log in if you already have an account. This is the model that we had previously from our previous modules, and this is a Python script, and that just gives us that simple model that. The change in volume with time is just q in minus q out. Then our q out is a function of the tank height. All right, so I'm going to go back here. So previously, we've been making this assumption that you can just switch the flow rate instantaneously, and we know that that's not physically possible. So we are no longer going to assume that we can do that. Rather, we're going to assume that we can make a step change in the valve position, and it's going to experience some kind of gain and some kind of lag. So we'll assume that this valve is measured, this valve position is measured in percentage and it would go from 0 to 100 percent. So we are going to put in a transfer function model here. So I'm going to give my transfer function model a gain. This gain goes in the numerator. I'm going to give it a gain of 0.1 and what that's telling me is that I would expect for my flow through the valve to increase by 0.1 multiplied by whatever change I made in my valve position. So my flow rate varies from about 0 to um, 10 meters cubed per minute. I'm, my valve position goes from 0 to 100 percent open. So to capture that gain, I use a gain of 0 0.1, meaning that my output from this transfer function is going to be 0 0.1 times my input. So that captures this valve going from 0 to 100 um, over its full range, and that translates to my flow rate going from 0 to 10. So here in the denominator, this first position in the denominator is where I enter my process time constant. And I'm going to assume a process time constant here of about one minute. So uh, I'm just going to keep that the same. So this is, means that if I make a change in valve position, it's going to take about one minute for the flow rate to get 63% of the way to its new flow rate. So let's just look at how this happens. So previously, we were assuming that you could just make this sharp, immediate change in, in flow rate. Now we're going to look at um, how this flow rate might really change. So I'm going to change the name of this transfer function to be qin, so that this will tell me I can put a scope on it and I can see how the valve position, or how the flow rate really changes the valve position. OK, I've said a mouthful. We have a, if I click back here on the blank spot, I can look at my uh, simulation time. Let's just simulate this for 10 minutes. And what I want to do is I want to make a step change in valve position at time uh, t equals 5 minutes. And I'm going to say let's go from 20% open to 40% open. And let's see what kind of an impact that has on my valve position. I'm going to give my tank an initial volume of 10. This won't matter particularly because we won't be looking at that part of the model just yet. All right, so let's run this and, and see how when we introduce actual dynamics into our, uh, into our valve, how that affects the flow rate. OK, so here's my flow rate, Q in. So you can see I go from 0. I reach this first steady state. Remember, my valve position was 20. That does reflect in having eventually having a, um, a flow rate of nearly 2. We haven't quite reached steady state. So now I look at my valve position. I make that step change at t equals 5 minutes. And my flow rate does not instantaneously change anymore. Rather, it takes a little while 
to get up to its new flow rate of about four. And as you can see, um, if we look one time constant, after we make the step change, that's here at t equals six minutes, we should see that our uh, new flow rate is about 63% of the way to its final steady state. All right, in the next video lecture, we're going to actually look at how do we control this. Let's say we do want to be able to, to directly control what our flow rate is. We're going to add an, a, a PID controller, a, a feedback, one of the basic feedback controllers to our system so that we can directly regulate our flow rate using commands from a control system.